Everyone who played the 2008 horror survival hit Dead Space probably remembers three things about it. One, this game felt eerily similar to Resident Evil. Two, it was the only game I'm aware of that you had to shoot off the limbs of enemies to kill them. And three, this game haunted your dreams. Not because it was particularly scary, but because it was really, really hard. Between the constant lack of ammo and the enemies that would come out of walls, floors, or ceilings to slaughter you in some of the most creative ways I've ever seen, this game pulled no punches. But despite its difficulty, Dead Space did manage to have a very strong story, and it did manage to create an extremely strong, dark, and foreboding atmosphere. So how does the sequel hold up to the original? Well, let's take a look and find out. In this game, you once again take on the persona of Isaac Clarke, the engineer, no, not that engineer, who survived the first encounter with both the necromorphs and the mysterious marker on the UST Ishimura from the first game. But fighting your way through hordes of aliens doesn't leave you without scars. After coming in contact with the marker, Isaac is starting to experience massive hallucinations. Most of these hallucinations involve him being haunted by the ghost of his dead girlfriend. Oh uh, wait, was that? You didn't beat Dead Space yet and didn't know Nicole was dead? Oh. Well, uh, maybe you should be watching the review of the sequel if you haven't played the first one yet. Just saying. This game takes place a few years after the first one on a space station orbiting Saturn. Isaac has been committed to a mental institution when the station finds itself under attack by the Necromorphs. So, it's up to the battle-tested, yet battle-scarred Isaac to fight his way off the station. But Isaac soon discovers that the Necromorphs are the least of his worries, as he discovers that another marker has been built on this station. So, along with dealing with the Necromorphs, Isaac must find and destroy this marker in order to attempt to break the cycle once and for all. Not that the Necromorphs would make it easy on him. In this game, you'll be facing all of the familiar faces from the previous Dead Space, along with some new ones, such as children and even babies. Yes, you kill zombified alien babies in this game. No wonder your mom hates this game. But Isaac isn't alone. Along the way, you will encounter some people who will aid you in your quest. But a word to the wise. Not everyone is who they say they are, and you may find yourself in a sticky situation as a result more than once. Well, it looks like it's about time to get to the reviewing, so let's do this. As far as the gameplay goes, this game is largely unchanged from the first Dead Space, aside from a few new necromorphs to deal with and some new weapons. But probably the most helpful feature as far as the combat system goes is the new ability to pick up the limbs of the dead necromorphs and shoot them at the live ones. And trust me, this is more than helpful when you're playing a game that is pretty stingy when it comes to ammo. As far as the zero gravity segments go, this feature has been completely revamped and reconstructed from the last game. So instead of just jumping from platform to platform, this game allows full 360 degree movement. This gives you complete control during these segments rather than just being restricted to two different platforms. Another interesting feature for this game is the addition of puzzles. Now these are a bit few and far in between, but they can be a fun change of pace, and it is interesting to see them use the fact that Isaac is an engineer as a gameplay factor. And now for the difficulty. Did you play Dead Space 1? You did? Well, then you know that this game will pull absolutely no punches when it comes to the difficulty. Yes, the enemies will come from absolutely nowhere to execute you. So, unless you enjoy watching Isaac get mauled in every conceivable fashion, I'd get used to hitting the restart last checkpoint button. Now, speaking of checkpoints, let's talk about the save system. Now, this game has the exact same system as the former Dead Space and pretty much all of the Resident Evil games. And if you don't know what that means, that means that when you die, you go back to your nearest checkpoint, but when you restart the game, you have to start from specific save locations found throughout the game. Now these locations really aren't that far from each other, but I personally feel that this system is just obsolete and unnecessarily annoying, especially for a game that came out in 2011. Now all these features are combined into a campaign that will run you anywhere from 10 to 20 plus hours, depending on the difficulty you choose. Now let's take a look at the graphics. No, seriously, just look. Can you find anything bad to say about them? Because I can't. These graphics are awesome. Moving on. One of the most noteworthy additions to this game is the online multiplayer. Now this multiplayer is similar to the multiplayer in Left 4 Dead. In other words, you have two teams. One team is a team of humans who must fight through the necromorphs in order to complete their objectives. And the other team is the Necromorphs, whose objective is to stop the humans from completing their objectives. Playing through these online games allows you to unlock newer weapons and suits when you play as the humans, and upgrades all the attacks done when you play as the Necromorphs. 
So, if you enjoyed the first game, enjoy third-person shooters, enjoy horror survival games, or enjoy a game with a challenge, and I cannot stress that last part enough, then Dead Space 2 is for you. It keeps the positive aspects from the first game, along with adding some great new features to keep you playing for quite a while. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching, but before I go, here's something to haunt your dreams. Well, kitties.